class. This is section 2.1 in Algebra 1. I've already responded to one of you guys this morning saying I don't understand how to do that Venn diagram on the homework for section 2.1. So I'm just going to go ahead and work through that here with you on this video. You can just pay attention to it and copy it onto your paper. Um, make sure that you understand what's going on. But first, can you tell me why the sheep crossed the road? Well, a sheep crossed the road so you could get to the Baba shop that was on the other side of the road. Okay, see that's why I do these lame jokes behind the camera because you guys can't throw tomatoes at me. Anyway, section 1.1, rather section 2.1 is what we're going over now. This is what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to recreate this diagram. Now I think of a Venn diagram, and maybe some of you do, as you know the overlapping circles. But this is also a Venn diagram because circles are contained within each other. And the smallest circle in here is the most specific, the smallest group. This is a set of natural numbers we talked about on Friday. It's the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. The whole numbers are the set of natural numbers plus the number zero. The set that's identified by the capital letter Z is what we call the integers, and this contains both the natural numbers and the whole numbers, and then the opposites of all of the natural numbers. In other words, it's negative numbers, zero, and positive whole numbers. And then we have the rational numbers, and we discussed on Friday how rational numbers come. You can see where that name came from by the first prefix part of the word, ratio, where you have a relationship between one number and another number. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction. You know, something that looks like a fraction to us. It's written in ratio form. A over B, that's the form of a ratio. Something in the numerator, divided by something in the denominator. Rational numbers can be written in the form A over B. And then this big box outside here includes all numbers that we call real numbers. Real numbers are both rational and irrational. And I said that if rational numbers could be written as a ratio of A over B, ratio of two numbers, then irrational numbers would be numbers that you can't write as a fraction. Like um, rational numbers would include terminating decimals, like if you said 5 divided by 2, that's equal to 2.5. It also includes repeating decimals. The ratio of 1 third, if you divide that out, that's actually Point three repeating, the three continues on forever, but it's a, re it's, it's a repeating decimal. So repeating decimals would, would be rational because this, well not this one right here, but if we had point three repeating, you can write that as a fraction because that is the decimal equivalent of the fraction one third. Real numbers, however, not only contain the set of rational numbers, but it also contains the set of irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are numbers that you cannot write as a fraction so that they look like a fraction. You cannot write them as a ratio of one number to another number. And those would be, examples of those would be square roots of numbers that are not perfect. The square root of four is two because when you're finding the square root of a number, you're looking for a number that you use that number as a factor twice, and you get the, the product is the number that's underneath your radical sign symbol. It's called the radicand. So the square root of four is two, because two used as a factor twice, or two times two is equal to four. So that's a rational number. But if I asked you to tell me what the square root of 3 is, you can't tell it to me. If I asked you to tell me what pi is, what the numerical value 
of pi is that we use when we find the circumference and the radius of the circle? Well, in pre-algebra, algebra 1, maybe 7th grade algebra, we approximate pi and we say that pi is equal to 3.14. The only thing is, pi is not equal to 3.14. This qualifies as a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. It's 3.14159268. On and on and on and on and on and on. Never terminates, never repeats. So it doesn't stop and there's no discernible pattern to it. So pi would be a real number, but not a rational number, because you cannot write it as a fraction, a over b. All I've done here is I have completed the homework problem, and they want you to put these in the most innermost circle that's possible. So 3 over 1, that's written like a fraction, isn't it? But that doesn't mean that rational number is all the more it is because it can be written as a fraction. When you reduce the fraction 3 over 1, you get 3, right? 3 is a counting number. It's a natural number, so it belongs in here. Likewise, the square root of 2, that's rational. It's also a real number. But the actual value of the square root of 2 is 2, which is a natural number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 3 over 1 and the square root of 4 are natural numbers. Then, whole number, that fits in the set of integers, it fits in the set of rational numbers. It also fits in the set of real numbers. But the smallest group that you can get it into is the set of whole numbers. It's not a natural number because the natural numbers don't include 0. However, the whole numbers do include 0. So that's where this one belongs. Likewise, we've got a negative 6. Negative 6 is a rational number. You can write it as a ratio. Negative 6 divided by 1. But most narrowly defined, it's an integer. It's a negative number. Now we're in rational numbers. Rational numbers are those that can be written as a fraction a over b, as a ratio a, a over b. But we don't call this so much a fraction anymore in algebra. It's a rational number or a ratio. Obviously, we have a ratio here. 0 0.5 doesn't look like a ratio to you, but what does this actually say? This says 5 tenths. So you can write that as a rational number, can't you? There is a way that you can convert this repeating decimal into a rational number. So repeating decimals are rational numbers. But then we have these three, see I was going to say puppies again. This time they're live puppies though. 4.86, 866, 8666. What's the next pattern? Yeah, 86666. The pattern never ends and it never repeats itself. This is called non-terminating, non-repeating. Non-terminating non-repeating. So non-terminating, non-repeating numbers are real numbers, but they're not rational numbers because they cannot be written as a ratio A over B. Here's another non-terminating, non-repeating. Here's the square root of a number that's not a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square because 2 times 2 is 4. There is no integer number that when you use it as a factor twice, you get 5. So the square root of 5 right here is irrational, which means it's a part of the real numbers. And that's what they wanted you to do. They want you to make sure that you're understanding what these different types of numbers are. So let's go ahead and look at a little bit more from section 2.1. See what else I'd like to put on this video. On this digital recording, it's not videotape, of course, anymore. Okay, example number one, which one of these numbers is not rational? We have, this is example one, page 47. 
we have 5 eighths, negative 17 twelfths, 0, 4 and 2 thirds, negative 9. We also have 3 over 0. We have 341 divided by 3. And the question here is which one of these numbers is not a rational number? What's a rational number again? It's a number that looks like a fraction. It's something that can be written as the ratio between A and B. This looks like a fraction. This looks like a fraction. So that one is correct. This looks like a fraction. What about zero? Zero is a whole number, but can you write it as a fraction? Sure. Zero divided by zero is zero. Actually, not over zero. Zero divided by one is zero. What about four and two-thirds? That's a mixed number. It's not a fraction. It's not a ratio. But you can write it as an improper fraction, can't you? Three times two is four, plus two is 14. So that can be written as 14 thirds. That one's rational. What about negative nine? It's an integer. It's a negative whole number. But it can also be written as a ratio by dividing by one. So it's not this one. We already know it's not this one. The only number that we have left that could possibly be not a rational number would be 3 divided by 0. But it's written in the form a over b, isn't it? A numerator divided by a denominator. Why is this not rational? Well, remember, b has to be different from 0. You cannot divide by 0. That's a that's an impossibility, and we discussed this for a bit in class on Friday. So this number here, this expression here, 3 divided by 0, is the one, the only one of all of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers that isn't rational. This marker is nearly gone. So let's go ahead and look at another one here. Skip the page, which I don't want. I'm not going to actually work this next problem out because this is so very much a 7th grade math, 6th grade math pre-algebra type problem, but I will remind you what to do. It says convert these rational expressions to decimals. You have 12 fifths and 4 elevenths to decimals. How do you do that? How do you convert a fraction to a decimal? You take the numerator and you divide it by the decimal. 2 times 5 is 10. 2, we're going to add that decimal and bring down a 0. 2.4. 12 fifths is the same as 2.4 converted to a decimal. When you actually go ahead and divide 4, by 11, as it shows in your book, you end up with a pattern that repeats. And if you continue, it's going to be 0 0.36, 36, 36. So what's the pattern that repeats here? Yeah, the 36 repeats. So how you would write this, you would say that 4 elevenths is equal to 0 0.36 repeated. And you need to make sure that your repeater bar is over both the 3 and the 6. Because if you only had it over the 6, what would that mean? 0 0.3, 6 repeating, that would be 0 0.366666. So you have to be very particular in the work that you show me. Make sure that you put your repeater bar, your indication that the fraction, or rather that the decimal repeats, make sure but that's over both of those numbers. Okay? Example three. Which one of these rational numbers terminate? Which ones of them repeat? You do the division. If they end, then they terminate. If there's a pattern, 
then they repeat. Okay? This says, give a rational approximation equal to pi and to the square root of 2. When it says a rational approximation, rational means that it has to take the form of a fraction, where you have a numerator divided by a denominator, pi. So pi is equal to 3.1415, you know, there's a pattern. You're going to want to approximate this, you know, just take it out to two decimal places. So that's, you know, in, in this little squiggly thing that says equals approximately 3 and 14 what? If we just say 3.14 now, that says 3, the decimal point's name is and, 3 and 14, we call the place of this last digit, 3 and 14 hundredths. So you go from the decimal to the fraction, 3 and 14 hundredths, well, that's equal to approximately <clears throat> 314 one hundredths. You want to go ahead and reduce that. You can also say that that's three and one seventh. Let's see how did we go to one seventh? Now this is one that would be possible. You could also reduce this more by dividing by 2, but this is a rational approximation of pi. And then look at the square root of 2, and it explains how you approximate the same way by reading the decimal number, rewriting that decimal as a fraction, converting it so that you have a numerator divided by a denominator. Example 5 talks about those things that I did at the very beginning of this video, and that's the end of section 2.1.